In this video, we're going to tell you the early dates of the construction of the third temple, as well as what the third temple will be like, where it will be built, how it will be built, and who will be the ministers of that temple. We wanted to do this video because we're always getting questions about the third temple in the comment sections of our videos. We do a lot of videos related to the third temple. Uh, one of the questions is coming from from uh, Tanuja Tapa, he is asking when is the temple, he says, temple when it will ready. Now, I believe this is one of the viewers from India, if I'm not mistaken. I've gotten a comment from a gentleman from India, and he was, you know, asking me to talk in plain English so he can understand what I was saying. Um, so, what I understand he's trying to ask here is when will be the construction of the third temple. And so we're planning on answering that in this video. Now here's another question from Miguel. He's asking what will happen after the third temple is built. All right. So we're going to go in detail in this video answering that question. And then we have this question from Truth Seeker. He says, my question is what is your interpretation of New Jerusalem? Literally a New Jerusalem coming down from heaven or is it a metaphor for receiving the blessings from God? Now we're going to address this as well in this video but let me go ahead and read my comment before we get started. My answer is, is that it's the latter. The layout of the old Jerusalem will be with man. Our spirits will be the building material. The 144,000 will make up the walls of the tower the 144,000 will make up the walls of this tower-like temple. The closest to their level of spiritual evolution will be inside the tower. The multitude of people from all races and tongues will make up the courtyard. Non-believers will be locked out altogether. All right. So we will to give more detail on this as we go through this class and break some of this stuff down. So. So sit back, relax, prepare to hit the comment button as we go. Hit that like button if you haven't done so already. And let's get on with it. Let me start right here at the second time that is actually listed. This is down here in chapter 4. It says, Master, why did you not choose your manifestation in this time in one of those large temples of churches where they might have offered you rich altars, normal ceremonies worthy of you? Now, this is what we're going to find out in this in this um, this video is that the third temple is not like the first two temples at all. The first three temples, if you consider that one out there, that tabernacle built out there by Moses as one, it was wasn't those temples that were materialistic is not like the third temple at all now this one down here coming out of chapter 8 is talking about the hundred and forty four thousand I'll start right there at verse 7 he says when these people are strong and numerous they will attract to themselves the attention of their fellow men for the cleanliness of their works and the sincerity of their worship must surprise humanity. Then men will ask, who are these who without temples know to pray in this way? And so what is telling us here again is that the third temple is not a brick and mortar temple. It's saying that these guys, these 144,000 are not going to have a temple that they go to worship in as they did in, in the past. And so this along with the cleanliness of their works and sincerity of their worship is going to surpri surprise the majority of humanity who are now looking for a materialistic um, brick and mortar temple to be built. All right, now jumping down here to chapter 14, verse 26 says, My doctrine teaches you a perfect form of worship, spiritual and pure toward the Father. For the spirit of humanity has arrived without realizing it at the threshold of the Lord's temple, where it will enter to fill my presence 
to hear my voice through his conscience and to see me in the light that descends upon its mind. So now this is this is what we're talking about when we're talking about the third temple is, you know, something that man really can't see. You see right here how it's talking about without realizing it. They're at the threshold of the Lord's temple, not Solomon's temple, not the second temple. We're talking about the Lord's temple, that temple that's never going to be destroyed, that temple that's going to last forever. But notice it says right here the threshold of that temple because if we jump over here in chapter 11 of Revelations verse 19 says and the temple of God was opened in heaven and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament and there was lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail this is talking about after the seventh seal has been opened and so that's why it's mentioning over there in the third testament how we're at the threshold because this temple hasn't been opened yet from what we read in the Second Testament of the Bible, I think there's no surprise that the Third Temple will be built on the hearts and minds of humanity. But there's a lot of religious groups that want to teach and a lot of people want to think that that temple has already been opened yet. But as we can see over here in Revelations and even the Third Testament backs it up as well, is that we're not quite there yet. We, um, we, the temple will be our bodies one day or our bodies will be the temple one day, but we have to get to that seventh seal to get there. All right, now jumping down here in chapter 16, which talks about the, the divine law, the commandments and such over there in the Third Testament of the Bible. Verse 25 says, I come to reconstruct my temple, a temple without walls or towers, for it is in the hearts of men. Right. So like we said, this is no surprise to anybody. When you jump over here to first Corinthians in the King James Version of the Bible, uh, chapter three, verse 16 says, know ye that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Talking about how we are the temple of God. Now, you know, um, now this is not to say that they're not going to actually go over and physically try to build a, a temple over there in Jerusalem. You know, you know, a lot of people believe that there's going to be a war that's going to break out over this third temple. But the purpose of this class is for us to understand that, you know, they fight as they will, carry on as they may. That really has nothing to do with the Lord's temple. The Lord's temple is built on the hearts of humanity. Like we read over here in the third testament of the Bible, the temple is built without walls or towers, for it is in the hearts of man. The third temple will be in the hearts of man. And so, you know, those guys over there, you know, I guess that's why we got President Trump in office now. He's like one of the top real estate guys in the world. And, and as they're trying to own that real estate over there in Jerusalem, I don't know what they plan to do. If they plan to sell it to the father when he shows up or plan to make him pay rent or whatever, but because they actually own the rights to that land over there. But you understand that the third temple was actually going to be on the hearts of man so they're wasting their time you know but you know I wish that was all they were wasting you know they're wasting bullets they're wasting wasting bombs and you know they're wasting a lot of lives over there with that you know brick and mortar temple that they're trying to trying to build over there all right let me jump over here to chapter 17 of the third testament of the bible it's called the new way of worshiping god it's a very important chapter over in the third testament of the bible as you can imagine talking about the new way of worshiping god like i said but it's is it really talks about spirit to spirit communication which is extremely important when it comes to the way we worship the father but let me jump down here to verse 159 it says you can communicate with your father wherever you are for the place is of no consequence it can be at the top of the mountain or if you find yourself in the depths of a valley 
in the commotion of a city, in the peace of your home, or in the midst of a struggle. If you seek me in the interior of your sanctuary, in the midst of the deep silence of your elevation, the doors of the universal and invisible temple will be opened instantly so that you can fill yourself truly in the house of the Father, which exists in each spirit talking about that temple how it exists in each of our spirit now this this kind of goes against what we said a few minutes ago how the temple wasn't open this is not talking in futuristic tense this is talking in present day and I think I don't believe there's a contradiction here it may have been a misunderstanding on my part but you know what I attributed this to is the fact okay yes the third temple is open presently but a few minutes ago we were talking about all of humanity so how many people out of 7.5 billion people 7.7 .7 it might be now how many how many people out of the seven or eight billion people that are on the planet realize you know that the temple is open now and you know so it is open to you know everybody I guess but there's only a few that will recognize this and be able to take it advantage of the fact that the temple is open whereas all of humanity no they're all going to find out at one time the majority of the people are not going to find out until the day of the Lord or the hour of the conscience or that great earthquake or the sky crack some big global event is what's going to wake everybody else up to the, the the fact that the temple is opened but what it's talking about right here in chapter 17 is how we all have this ability to communicate with him already Notice that the doors to this temple are universal and invisible, opened instantly so that you can feel yourself truly in the house of the Father. And for a reference to that, and I don't plan on referencing each one of these, but I will I will go over here to this one and reference the third temple over here in Revelation. Over here in chapter 7 and verse 15 it says, Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them this is talking about the people that come through great tribulation as you know we have a tribulation to go through in the earth and those that are actually plan on being saved will will actually you know survive to be saved means to survive the tribulation you know saved from death of this tribulation there's going to be a few people that's going to be here after it's all said and done and these people who have made it through this tribulation up here that is talking about these are the ones that will serve in the temple but what I wanted to bring out is how it says day and night day and night we understand that that temple does not close it's open 24 hours a day and I used to wonder about that you know before the third testament came in to clear a lot of things up how is this temple going to be open you know all through the night you know never closes or whatever but when we understand that it's a spiritual temple built on our hearts and in our spirits then sure you know I can wake up at 2.33 in the morning you know needing to commune with the Father and I could go into the temple and you know spend some time with him in there I don't have to wait till the doors open down there or travel all the way to Jerusalem to do so and like in the New Testament what he says is that the laws are a schoolmaster well what it turns out is is that by following the laws here in you know this late in the game 2020 when we start to follow the laws what that does is it helps us to to become conscious beings again it kind of closes the gap between our disobedience which separates us from our conscience the law gets us close enough to our conscience to where we can start to hear our conscience again the purest part of their being in their spirit, yeah, that is your conscience. Your conscience is the truth center. That's the obedience center. That that your conscience is that place where um, righteousness, you know, originates from inside of you. It tells you the difference between right and wrong. He says, it will be there that I will make my voice heard and where I will build my temple. So, so if we were taking notes, we'd write that down. The temple will be built on the purest parts of our conscience. He says, the sanctuary of which I have just told you is that of the conscience. 
that temple that none may profane the temple in which God dwells and from which his voice and his light issue okay so now here is talking about the conscious in relationship to our temple and I think it's important to note right here he says that temple in which God dwells so the conscious is the temple in which God dwells in we, we say that loosely because you know it ain't so much that the father is in us you know we're in him you know because you know he is he is omnipresent he is everywhere he is in everything he's created including that tree and that rock over there but he's also in us too and you say well where is he if you were to actually you know go inside of yourself and try to find out where he's at where he's at exactly in there he's in your conscious that temple that temple that we call the conscious or that temple that we're finding out is our conscious that's where he dwells and from which his voice and his light issue so when we hear our conscious talking to us we're actually hearing the father talking to us all right now here in chapter 32 is called incarnation nature and duties of human beings down here in verse 68 it says the pain that weighs down on men of this era is leading them step by step without realizing it to the doors of the inner sanctuary before which unable to go further they will ask Lord where are you and from the interior of the temple the sweet voice of the master will answer here I am where I have always dwelled in your conscience see this is important stuff guys we're talking about the third temple you know there's people that's interested in the third temple well here is where the third temple is this is what's going on here so let's look at this verse closely because it says the pain that weighs down on men of this era this see what we live in now is judgment day this is why you see a lot of crying going on a lot of anguish a lot of pain a lot of people getting hurt a lot of people getting shot a lot of play going on a lot of war and a lot of bad stuff is going on for humanity a lot of people hungry and such it is this pain this pain right here that do that's doing what leading them step by step to the doors of the inner sanctuary this pain is purifying us it is this pain that's actually helping us to reach this inner sanctuary that's why the scripture says for us to bear our cross with love because you know that cross is painful sometimes and but it is that pain that is doing what leading us step by step to the inner sanctuary now if you remember the you may not be familiar with the the sanctuary I know I, I ain't an expert on it by by any means but there was a veil on the inside of there to go to the Holy of Holies you had to go through a, a special veil or something like that that most people weren't allowed to and so when we get to that veil and we say where are you he says from that interior temple the sweet voice of the master will say here I am where I have always dwelled in your conscience. So getting a little bit of understanding here, you know, like I always say, I'm a student. I learn from these videos just like you guys do. That conscious is in the, in the Holy of Holies. That conscious, the conscious is in, the, in there by the mercy seat. In there where the Ark of the Covenant is at. Now, staying in the same chapter down here in verse 74 is talking about the, the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is, you know, of course, the same thing. But I wanted to bring this verse out back up here in 73. It's, it's telling us what we have to do. It says, Who does good fills my presence within him, just as he who is humble, or who sees his brother in every one of his fellow men? In your spirit exists the temple of the Holy Spirit. That enclosure is indestructible. There are no strong winds nor hurricanes that are capable of destroying it. It is invisible and intangible to the gaze of humans. Its columns are the desire to overcome yourself with goodness. Its dome is the grace that the Father pours out over his children. And its doors, the love of the Divine Master for all who knock at my door are touching the heart of the celestial mother now that's a mouthful down here but you know it's, it's important stuff because he's telling us what we have to do here we have to do good 
But when we do good, we'll feel his presence. And then right here he says we have to be humble. And we also have to see our brother in every one of our fellow men. When we do this, what it says, in your spirit exists the temple of the Holy Spirit. Right? And it's an indestructible temple. Can't be harmed by strong winds or hurricanes. Um, it's invisible and intangible to the human gaze. Nobody can look upon this temple and say whether you have it or not. You know, nobody, nobody knows if you're in that temple or not. He says his columns are the desire to overcome yourself with goodness. His dome is the grace that the father pours out over his children. Then it says that his doors are love of the divine mother. Down here in verse 75, he says, Here, disciples, is the truth of the church of the Holy Spirit, so that you be not of those who become confused by false interpretations. The temples of marble were but a symbol, and of them not one stone will be left upon another. Now, and this is what we heard over there. The Messiah told us that, you know, all of those buildings are going to be knocked down. That's what that big earthquake is about. They talk about that global earthquake, you know, that you hear about over there in Revelations. When you go when you go over there in other books like Jeremiah and Ezekiel and all of the prophets, they talk about how this earthquake is going to shake down every building on the planet. It's even going to flatten mountains and move islands out of their places. In the Third Testament, it says that three quarters of the earth is going underwater. And so when this is over here talking about how there's not going to be any of these buildings standing in this place, it's no doubt they're all going to be shaken apart. And so what he's saying here is don't be confused like them guys thinking that the temple, the third temple is going to be made of brick and mortar. It's not. You know, it's not going to be that at all. Even though they're going to be doing a little fancy dance over there in Jerusalem. We read over here in 6 and 19 of uh, 1 Corinthians is saying that the temple of the Holy Ghost is our body. Verse 19 says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. So don't be confused by those guys over there thinking that it's a brick and mortar temple. No, this is the temple of the Holy Ghost. If you if you are confused by those who thinking that it's going to be a brick and mortar temple, this is what you're going to be waiting for when you jump over here to First Thessalonians chapter two and three. He says, "Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God." And that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. So for those who are waiting for a brick and mortar temple, this is what they're going to get. You know, they, you know, this guy right here, the son of perdition, you know, the man of sin. That's who's going to be over there. Like I said, they, they, they're probably going to end up building that building over there. You know, that's a big real estate project, you know, that they want to that they want to take on. They already got project managers on that kind of stuff. They even got a model of it over there. And but when they do, if and when they do get it constructed, this is who's going to be sitting there waiting on them. This is this is who the man of the man of sin or the son of perdition says he opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God yep that's that's who going to be sitting over there but you know we the ones who are understanding over here you know we, we're understanding that it, the third temple is the temple of the Holy Ghost this temple is built in us this temple is already in us you know we're not waiting for you know the earthquake or the day of the Lord or the hour of the conscience to convince us you know we, we're going to talk to the Father Spirit to Spirit now we say our prayers silently communing with him with our spirits and such don't be don't be confused by all of that marble and all of that other stuff that's going on, a bunch of grand jury stuff. Could you imagine how how fancy that thing's gonna be here in 2020, 2021? That's that's gonna be some fancy stuff over there, I can imagine. Down here in verse 76, he says, I wish that in your interior altar the flame of faith burns always, and that you understand that with your works you are building the foundations where one day a great sanctuary will stand. I hold all humanity on trial and in preparation within their diverse ideas for 
to all I will give a part of the construction of my temple so here it is talking about the altar here now I'm probably going to do another class like this on the word altar so you guys go ahead and hit the subscribe button hit that bell button you know so when that class comes out you guys can catch it but he's talking about how the altar is also within us that he says an interior altar talking about the brazen altar that altar that the flame was supposed to burn at all times and never go out that one is an interior too but he says, as a humanity, we are building the foundations where one day a great sanctuary will stand. I hold all humanity on trial and in preparation within our diverse ideas. See, this is what humanity is going through. You know, you know, the, the father is not the author of our pain and all of this bad stuff that's going on. It's a man that's doing all of this stuff. He's even going to create this earthquake, you know. Some some believe that he's going to do so by way of a nuclear bomb placed in the wrong place on the planet that's going to cause a global earthquake. Like I said, it's going to destroy two thirds of the land mass. And but through these trials, the father, you know, he's going to have a few hundred thousand people, maybe a few million people that is going to be here and they're going to take advantage of this temple. They're going to they're going to be, you know, of and in this temple. Like we said a few minutes ago, the pain is what's going to get us there. All right, so down here in chapter 37 of the Third Testament of the Bible called Correct Understanding of the Biblical Text, he says, I am rebuilding the temple that I referred to when I said to my disciples who marveled, contemplating the temple of Solomon. Verily I say to you that of it there shall not be one stone left upon another, but I will reconstruct it in three days talking about Solomon's temple there some call it the second temple because if you remember uh, uh, Solomon's temple had been destroyed one time by Nebuchadnezzar and then uh, Nehemiah and Ezekiel Nehemiah and Ezra and them guys had went back in and rebuilt it but it still you know makes sense to refer to it as Solomon's temple verse 24 says I meant that an external worship regardless of how sumptuous it may seem to mankind will disappear from the heart of men in order to raise it in its place the true spiritual temple of my divine in the third era or that is to say the third day in which I shall finish reconstructing my temple yep talked about that at the beginning of this video how the temple is about to be constructed for all of humanity in the third era the third era started way back in there in 1866 or 1884 so the third temple has been available for anybody that wanted to take part in it all the way back those hundred and so years but remember that it's when that seventh seal is open that it's going to be finished that all of it's going to be done you know everybody's going to know about the third temple then not just the few that's watching this video and a few that around the world that are spiritualized or whatever it's going to be everybody la di da everybody's going to know about the third temple at the seventh seal now let's jump all the way down here to chapter 56 which is the triumph and recognition of the spiritual work of Christ this subsection is called the power of the doctrine of the Holy Spirit but I'm gonna start up here at verse 14 he says a new era has unfolded before mankind it is the era of light whose presence indicates a halt along the spiritual path of all men this will enable them to awaken meditate and rid themselves of their heavy burdens of traditions fanaticisms and errors in order to arrive later at a new life some sooner and others later all religions and sects will be arriving before the invisible temple before the temple of the holy spirit which is present in my work Firm is a column which rises towards infinity awaiting all the peoples and lineages now this part right here where he says he rises like a column towards the infinity see this right here uh, points over to the tower of the shepherd of Hermas let me jump over to that book a little bit right here 
in 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 the Shepherd of Hermes. Let me talk about this book just for a half a second. In it's, it's called the Shepherd of Hermes, and it's broken down into three parts. You have the part visions, which Hermes is in a dream state and he's shown a vision. Then in the second part, it's called commands, where Hermes is given a few commands that he has to follow. And like the law, it helps to bring Hermes closer to being a spiritual person, a spiritual individual, where he can start to take it advantage of things that he couldn't do you know as a sinful person and after that after he familiarizes himself with the the commands he actually is shown a uh, similar to where he gets to talk face to face with an angel the angel of repentance this is the first book I've ever read where an angel is actually you know a, you know co-author or maybe not maybe even the author of the book you know but he spends a lot of time with the angel of repentance who shows him you know how the tower is constructed and how it is built but I want to come over here and show you just a few things in here talking about this tower because the tower is the temple the temple is the tower and as the temple is built in the hearts and on the conscience of man you can imagine man has to prepare himself for that construction to take place and in the shepherd of Hermes in the vision part you have a symbol of the church that comes in and starts to show Hermes how this tower is being built how it's built out of stones the stones represent humanity and mankind and it's given in a way where each stone um, has a different shape or different uh, thing about it that represents the flaws of humanity. I'll take this one for instance right here. He says some of these were rough. Others had clefts in them and others were white and round not proper for the building of the tower. Now I've done we've done several classes over here out of similitudes. My wife and I still have this one class to do out of visions and we would actually have done a verse by verse class out of the whole entire book. So you guys can check that out on our channel or like I said, look down in the description so you can, you can, you can, you know, get a, um, a um, PDF of the Shepherd of Hermes or you can listen to an audio book, you know, if you like, you can find, you know, links to those down there in the description. But we've gone down through these and, you know, we can see like to have clefts in them. If I remember correctly, the person that has clefts is someone who holds resentments against one another. Like, you know, somebody may have harmed you and instead of forgiving that person, you kind of hold that you kind of hold stuff against them. Well, the Shepherd of Hermes tells you why and shows you how those resentments will actually get you kicked out of the tower. There will be no resentment people in this tower there will be no resentful people in the temple that's what the tribulation is about is it's going to cleanse the earth for all of these rough people all of those all, all of these different people with these different flaws will be given the opportunity through the form of baptism and you know meditation and prayer confessing of the sins they will be given the opportunity to cleanse away a lot of these flaws and stuff they have so that they will be able to go into this tower but some of them won't you see down here where it says some of them rolled into the desert places yeah, those, those people will be lost. They won't be able to go into the tower. These are people who, you know, they don't have a lot of faith. Some people are blasphemous, won't, won't be able to go into the tower. People who are doubtful, um, you, you know, they won't be able to go into the tower. And it, and it goes on. Now, this one right here, these white and round stones, these are important. Like I said, go over there and check this out. I don't want to talk on this too much. But these white and round stones are extremely important. Why? Because this is the majority of us. These, this is the majority of us. We're white because we are innocent. It has nothing to do with race or skin color or anything like that. We're white because we are innocent. That's what the white part means. 
we are round because of the riches of this world is clouding our faith, is clouding our minds, is separating us. You remember how we're supposed to separate ourselves from the world and separate ourselves from worldly stuff? So this round part, this, that's the worldly part that's getting in our way and we have to, we, we're, we're going to have to be parsed and cut away that's another significant part of the tribulation especially that earthquake part it's going to knock when it knocks down everybody's building it's going to take away everybody's materialism all of that you know stuff that we love so much you know is going to go away and then we're going to have the opportunity to go into this tower and into the temple going down here in chapter 58 which is the kingdom of the peace of Christ and the culmination of creation we're going to jump all the way down here to verse 25 he says I am building a temple of the Holy Spirit and when it has been constructed the gathering places temples and sanctuaries will have ceased to exist and will have lost their reason for existing and as will their symbols rites and traditions that will be when you feel my presence and greatness you shall recognize that your temple is the universe and as your form of worship the love of your fellow man see now he's pulling to the post earthquake time that time after all of these buildings have been shaken down and stuff there's, there's one part in the Bible that seems to imply that the buildings are going to be shaken down on Christmas or Easter I've, I heard that one time on a YouTube video and I've, I saw it and read it for myself in the, in the book but you know I, I didn't remember where it was and I've been desperately f trying to find that verse that implies that you know the worst parts of the earthquake are going to happen during Christmas or during the day of Easter while everybody is in church <laughs> what it sounded like it's in one of the prophets so if you know what it is place it down there in the in the comment section but you know what it's talking about here is have to, uh, after all of those buildings those brick and mortar churches and every other building on the planet has been shaken down have no reason to exist anymore then we're going to be having the, the, the temple of the Holy Spirit for all of humanity all of humanity again it's available to you now for those who want to who want to who want to go into the temple now you can do so now uh, by way of your spirit to spirit communication just prepare first do charitable deeds uh, get in tune with the law be baptized again that kind of thing but you know for the rest of the world there's coming a day when you know this is going to be the only temple around the other ones are going to be no no reason for symbols and rites and traditions and all of that kind of stuff it's, it's all going away this is going to be nothing left but the spiritual temple which is the universe Jumping down here in chapter 63, verse 77 says, I am preparing you for the time when you no longer hear my word. For the people will then call you the people without God, the people without temples. For you will have no regal places to offer me worship, nor celebrate in ceremonies, nor seek me in images. See, this is, this is, why you know you have to reject the doctrine that we're not supposed to be doing or honoring the feast days and such because we don't have a temple see that was Solomon's temple like I said you know the father's temple is on our hearts it's in our conscience that's where we're supposed to be worshiping him at he, you know in the past today and in the future that's where we're supposed to be worshiping the father at um, it says you know in the third testament how you know they kind of needed those brick and mortar temples, temples to give them an example or something to go by but that's all it was it, it, it wasn't it wasn't real you know it was you know for lack of a better word it is that 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 invisible temple that's real and so what he's talking about here is how you know when those individuals who are fascinated and, and you know by these brick and mortar temples see you guys that he's preparing when he sees us who he's preparing 
who don't need these brick and mortar temples they're going to call us the people without God it's like hey they, they don't have worship centers and they don't have regal places to offer worship they ain't you know doing all these big uh, ceremonies and they don't have big idols and crucifixes walking around this is a different kind of people he's talking about us but he's also talking about us in the third temple Jumping down here at 209, it says, He who conceives of me as spirit fills me inside him, around him, and in all that surrounds him, because he himself has become my temple. This is talking about once you become spiritualized. That, that is the thing that the Father wants the most of us is for us to become spiritualized individuals. That's basically what is going to that's basically the meaning of life when you think about it is for you know for us to come down here and learn how to become spiritual beings then we can go on to the higher mansions as spiritual beings and do bigger and greater stuff but as long as we're down here stuck in our materialism you know we may have to keep coming down here until we get over that part 210 says, Offer me spiritual worship. Do not be like those who raise temples and altars gilded with gold and precious stones, or who carry out great pilgrimages and punish themselves with hard and cruel flagellation, and who offer prayers and devotions prostrate on their knees, but who have still been unable to confide in their hearts to me. I have come to touch them through their conscience and to say, Who speaks? saying what he does and proclaims it to be four winds has no merit before the celestial father so don't be like those guys you know building brick and mortar temples they were I mean you can you pay attention to that stuff for entertainment purposes only I know I do I, I, I be interested to know you know what they doing over there only because I believe that it's going to be a huge war, you know, to break out. You know, there's a there's a dome of the rock sitting on top of that temple mount where they want to build that third temple at. And, you know, those Muslim people that are in charge of that, they, they ain't going to give it up so easily. So I'm kind of wondering, OK, how you guys going to pull this off? Are you going to build the temple in the wrong place? You know, you're not going to build it on the same place that, you know, Solomon had his temple. I think it was important. Solomon didn't. He did. He, he had some angelic help picking that spot. You know, or are they going to somehow, you know, build it on top of the Dome of the Rock? It's kind of like a soap opera. Now, another thing that I want to mention is the relationship between the Third Temple and the Rapture, as I understand it. As I mentioned in another class, the word Rapture is broadly used to cover a number of terms, a number of events in the Bible. In other words, we call a lot of things the rapture in the Bible. But the one thing that I think most closely fits 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and Daniel chapter 12 is the construction of the third temple on the hearts of humanity. When you look closely at those verses, trying to get an understanding of what's actually going to happen to us, one camp reads those verses and sees in them the great escape where they will leave the planet before the tribulation. The other camp sees the building of the third temple of those individuals that will remain here on the planet. It is not my intent in this video to argue which one is right and which one is wrong. It is very likely that both could be correct. Because what's clear in the Bible is that everybody will feel the effects of this change. Even those that are already in the spirit world. And that's what's meant by the living will not prevent the dead. Even those in the spirit world will experience this change that is to take place in humanity in the twinkling of an eye. So whether you call it the rapture or whether you call it the third temple or whether you call it the great awakening or even if you don't have a name for it stay tuned to this class because I plan to show you the early dates in which it is to occur so let's get into how the scripture shows us the early date of the rapture and of the third temple now whether or not this third temple is 
a brick and mortar temple to be built in Jerusalem or the temple that is to be built on the hearts of humanity I don't think is really important because actually I think they could occur simultaneously in other words when they start the construction of that temple over in Jerusalem the methods in which they get rid of the Dome of the Rock could have something to do with the third temple being built on our hearts or even the rapture alright but let's get on with it we're here in Daniel chapter 12 now in Daniel chapter 12 you start to read about this great awakening this corresponds with first Thessalonians chapter 4 and first Corinthians chapter 15 as well as Revelations chapter 11 and several other places in the Bible that describes these events that's going to take over humanity but let's drop down here to the end of the chapter and let's see the timing that Daniel gives us for these events to take place and again I'm saying that this is the early date I'm not saying that anything is actually going to happen on that date it is my belief that the events that are to take place will happen after this date in other words Pentecost 2020 was just a little bit too early anyway let's jump back over here to Daniel chapter 12 now I have done this in a few classes talking about 2020 so I'm not gonna go in that greater detail I've established how 2020 is a very important year you can already see that as you see things start to play out in 2020 all of these events that you're starting to hear about in 2020 are not just coincidence the 400 years that was prophesied to Abraham over there in Genesis chapter 15 ended right at the beginning of the year 2020 so a lot of what you're saying going on in the news is the fulfillment of that prophecy given in Genesis chapter 15 but to briefly show you how 2020 is the year let's jump down here to Daniel chapter 12 verse 11 but before I do so my attention was drawn back up to verse 10 see how it says right here but the wicked shall do wickedly when you read the Septuagint which in fact is a better translation than the King James Version it uses the words transgressors of the law instead of wicked and what it says it says those that transgress the law shall do wickedly and it says those that transgress the law will not understand so as some of the people in the comment section try to reject and discount what I'm saying you have to ask yourself and maybe even ask them are they who's being talked about here when he says those that transgress the law it was, again the Messiah told us that he didn't come to do away with the law he came to fulfill the law and that's what it means right there when it says but the wise shall understand alright let's look at verse 11 it says and from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that maketh desolate set up there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days now to understand what question is being answered here we have to jump back up to verse 8 when Daniel asks the angel Gabriel what shall be the end of these times he's basically asking Daniel when these events will take place when will this third temple be built when will the rapture occur and Gabriel starts to tell him down in verse 11 he says that there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days one thousand two hundred and ninety days from the day that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination that maketh desolate set up so if you jump over to second Kings in chapter 25 and look at verse 8 you can see what Daniel was talking about he says in the fifth month on the seventh day of the month 
came the captain of the guard, the servant of the king unto Jerusalem. And in verse 9, he says that he burnt the house of the Lord and all of the houses of Jerusalem. Verse 10 tells you how he broke down the walls of Jerusalem. Verse 11 tells you how he carried the people away. And in verses 13, 14, 15, 16 and on, he starts telling you how he took away the daily sacrifice. You see there in verse 14, he took away the pots and the shovels and the snuffers and the spoons and all the vessels of brass wherewith they ministered, took they away. This is the daily sacrifice that was taken away. Those tools were used to make the daily sacrifice. And as those tools were taken away, they were no longer able to take the daily sacrifice, especially since he also took away the Levites and the priests. So this is what verse 11 of Daniel chapter 12 is talking about when he says, And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Now we understand that these days are talking about years. He's telling Daniel from that time back over there in 2 Kings until they set up the abomination that maketh desolate will be 1,290 years. Now looking at this time chart of human history, we can see that this all took place in the year 606 B.C. This began the 70 years of captivity that ended in 536 B.C. Like I said, we've done this in several videos before and proved this 606 date is correct. It's easily done if, if you go in and Google the 70 years of captivity starting in 606 B.C., you see that that date is actually correct. So let's quickly look at what Gabriel is telling Daniel here. He's saying from 606 B.C. plus 1,290 years. And you have to remember to add one year because there was no year zero. You should see the abomination of desolation set up in 685 A.D. He's saying that the abomination of desolation, the abomination that maketh desolate, should be set up in 685 A.D. So you say, well, what happened on the Temple Mount in 685 A.D.? Remember in 606? B.C., when these all started, the temple was burned. So what happened in 685 A.D., 1,290 years later? As I said, I'm suffering from power losses over here. In 685 A.D., the Dome of the Rock was built on the exact spot that the first temple set. Solomon's Temple which was reconstructed in about 417 BC and it also demolished again in about 70 AD is where they built the Dome of the Rock which is commonly understood to be a temple to Allah but less commonly understood to be a temple to a pagan god that I'm not going to mention here this is what the Messiah was talking about over there in Mark 13 and in Matthew 24 when he says but when you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing where it ought not that him that readeth understand then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains now notice this now notice this parenthetical phrase right here that he's talking about let him that readeth understand not everybody's going to understand what the Messiah was talking about. Like Daniel said earlier, the wicked will not understand. It shouldn't be hard to understand that those that don't read the word of God will be the transgressors of the law. Neither of which will understand what we're talking about here. So let's go on. But we have to understand that the father is not the author of confusion. He put scripture after scripture, text after text, book after book of scriptural texts to help us understand this information. It is only those that reject the word that will have a hard time getting it. And frankly speaking, they will never get it. 
But here in verse 11, he's talking about the abomination that maketh desolate, which occurred in 685 A.D. But he goes on to say, Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. So whereas we got the abomination in 685 A.D., if we could somehow wait 1,335 years after that, we should get a blessing, according to verse 12 of Daniel chapter 12. Coming back over here to our calculator, if we go 685 and add 1,335 years, we end up with the year 2020. And this, I believe, is why we're seeing so many things going on in the year 2020. Riots and protests, coronaviruses. Stock market plunges. I don't know if there are rumors, but I'm also hearing that the Queen of England has been dethroned by a king who calls himself the Messiah. And a lot of other things going on in this year 2020. If, that, if that's any truth in that, that could very well be the Antichrist. But I'm only speculating there. Even if there turns out to be no truth in it, there's still a lot going on in the year 2020. And this is why a lot of people were looking for 2020 to be the date of the rapture. But Pentecost, I believe, was too early. And let me show you why. Because as Daniel says up there from the daily sacrifice to be taken away, points us back over to 2 Kings. You see over in 2 Kings... And verse 8 is saying on the fifth month and on the seventh day of the month. So from reading this and knowing how accurate the scripture is, there's no way for the third temple or the rapture to take place before the fifth month and the seventh day of the month. That's why I'm calling that the early date. Those events must take place after the fifth month. And on the seventh day of the fifth month. I'm going to touch on this in a future class and show you how in the fifth month. There's been a lot of temple activity. The first temple was knocked down in the fifth month. The second temple was destroyed in the fifth month. Even Antiochus Epiphanes committed his abominations, burning the walls and such around the fifth month. That's why the Bible talks about the fast of the fifth month. So I believe the fifth month is the early date for these events to take place. So what do we do in the meantime? Like I mentioned earlier, we should be studying the word of God. By the time the fifth month gets here, we could have studied the whole book of the Shepherd of Hermas, understanding his principles, how we should reject things like hate and selfishness, and pride, taking on things like humility and patience and love for each other. And we can also have listened to or maybe even read the third testament of the Bible. Understanding spirit and truth, learning how to pray, learning how to use these powers given to us. We can do a lot of things by the time we get to the fifth month. I think we should fully take advantage of it. But some will ask, what could happen during this time? Talking about the third temple and its relationship to the rapture. Well, like we mentioned, there's a lot of activities that is taking place in the fifth month. And Daniel chapter 12 seems to be pointing to 2020 of the fifth month. The third temple could actually be constructed in the year 2020 sometime after the fifth month. But before that to take place, they must remove the dome of the rock that's sitting on the temple mount. That structure is in the way. So our president, who is now struggling in the polls, trying to figure out how he could be reelected. Could he actually start a war before November of 2020? Well, you could do your own research, but from what I've understand, it was well understood many, many decades ago that when Donald Trump took the presidential office of the United States, one of his missions would be to destroy the Dome of the Rock. Now, I don't know how true that is, 
I'm not a prophet and I don't know the future. But I will bet you this. If he knocks down the dome of the rock, this world and all of its inhabitants is going to change and will be changed forever. Now, this is probably the most important thing you should have got out of this class. Now, for most of you ain't surprised that it's a third temple built on the hearts and minds. You may have got some stuff out of the, dealing with the conscience. I know I did. But for the majority of people, it's the fulfillment of the law and how the law and the temple go hand in hand. For those who want to be involved in the third temple and don't want nothing to do with the law, you're fooling yourself. And for those who want to have something to do with the third temple, but they don't want to have nothing to do with loving each other, you're fooling yourself as well. It's by doing these two things do you give tribute to the creator and master. So go in, check out the law. You can find that over there in books like Exodus. You can find that over there in books like Deuteronomy. Um, even the book of Leviticus and Numbers has a lot to do with rules. You can check our channel for rules and stuff like that. It's coming out of the Third Testament. We do a lot of help for helping people to understand what the covenant is and what the laws are and, and how we're supposed to be following those. Um, go ahead and hit that like button if you haven't done so already. Hit the subscribe button and that bell button so you can get future classes that we put out. Leave a comment if you haven't done so already. Any input you may have. Or any questions or concerns, feel free to put those below. Pray for us. And Shalom.